Just kidding, guys. We're not going to be rumbling today, but we are going to be learning some incredible new stuff because today we have lesson number three in our incredible new tutorial series where you are learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Xavier NX. Now, what I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice, enormous mug of iced coffee. And I will need you to get out your Jetson Xavier NX gear. What? You don't have your gear yet? Look in the description down below. I have links over to Amazon to all the equipment that I will be using in this series of lessons. And it will make your life easier and my life easier if we are working on identical hardware. Hey, as always, I also want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It's your help and encouragement that keeps this great educational content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, look in the description down below. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what we are going to learn today. Well, as you know, this video series is going to be about artificial intelligence. It's going to be about machine learning, deep neural networks, deep learning, all of these types of things we're going to be doing. But a lot of it is going to be done in the context of image recognition or working with images coming from a camera. The framework that we're going to be using in this series of lessons is primarily we're going to be using Visual Studio Code that we installed in the last lesson. Then on top of that, we're going to be running in Python. And then Python has a library of very powerful image manipulation and image analysis uh, software library that is called OpenCV. So we'll be using Visual Studio Code and Python and OpenCV. And then one of the things that we will be doing in this whole series of lessons in OpenCV is interacting with cameras and interacting with displays. So you go and you grab a frame from a camera, you do all types of cool stuff, and then you display it to a display. And so what we have to do first off is get to where we can interact with a camera. Now I know on these lessons some of you guys are using a webcam, something like a Logitech 920 or Logitech 720 webcam. A lot of you are going to be using the Raspberry Pi camera. Now the only difference in the code and all the things I'm going to teach is going to be one line of code. So there's only going to be one line of code. There'll be one that we use if you're using a Logitech camera. There will be one line of code that we use if you're using a Raspberry Pi camera. So what I'm going to do today is is I'm going to show you how to interact with either the Logitech camera or a web camera or interact with the Raspberry Pi camera today. So that's what our goal is, is to be able to fire up either one of those two cameras by the end of this lesson. You guys that have followed along on my Jetson Nano uh, lessons, there's going to be some cool new stuff in this series of lessons. I've learned a lot more about GStreamer and I've learned a lot more about how to really control the cameras. And so you guys might want to tune in too because there's going to be some new stuff in this series of lessons. But let me get out of your way and then let me have you fire up your Visual Studio code. I did get the, uh, I won't say angry, but I did get the feedback from a number of you guys that the dark background with light text was not as easy for you to read. So I went back to the old light background with dark text, and I hope you guys can see this a little bit better. But, you know, let me know because I really want this to be, it's, uh, you know, this is some pretty tedious stuff, and so I want it to be uh, simple enough for you guys to be able to very clearly see what I'm writing. Okay, up in the up upper left is our file explorer, so go ahead and go there. <coughs> and if you haven't done so already, create a Pi Pro folder on your desktop. You just do that by right mouse clicking and say new folder. Create a new folder on your desktop called Pi Pro. I believe we did that last week, so you should already be there. And so then uh, click on that. 
And then what we are going to do is we're going to create another folder inside of that. And I am going to call that folder open CV because this is where we're going to put some of these early lessons in the folder called open CV. So I will click on open CV and now I will click on the plus with the white sheet of paper, not the folder, the plus with the white sheet of paper. And that will let me create a file and I am going to call this open CV dash one and then dot py. The dot py actually is kind of important so don't forget that all right boom now here we are in a fresh new python program ready for us to run so the first thing we are going to do is import cv2 so open cv is called cv2 so we're going to open uh, we're going to import uh, cv2 and then what we are going to do is we are going to print and cv2 dot underscore underscore version and then underscore underscore and it closed the parentheses for me already and then enter let's go ahead and run this just to make sure we have open cv installed and running in uh running in this visual studio properly so i'm going to right mouse click and say run python file in terminal and boom you see down here we have 4.1.1 which is our version of open cv so we are really rolling here now <clears throat> the very simplest camera to operate is the webcam. So I'm going to do this just real quick with the webcam. If you have the webcam, follow along with me. If you have the Raspberry Pi camera, do everything I'm doing, and then I'll come back in a minute. I'll give you the extra line of codes you need to fire off the Raspberry Pi camera. Okay, so we will come down here, and what we have to do is we have to create a camera. <coughs> Excuse me. We will have to create a camera object. I will call the camera object cam. And then that is going to be equal to cv2.vidio with an uppercase V. Ah, now look, if you guys put those two lines of code in your JSON file, like I showed you how to last week, you see that it is now recognizing and guessing my commands. Now, if you haven't done that yet, skedaddle on back over to lesson number two and make sure that you edit your JSON files where the IntelliSense or autocomplete works for you. Because you see, boom, there it is, video capture. I can just click enter and it will finish putting that in for me. And now I am just going to put in a slash dev. I think I've got to put it in a single quote, a single quote like that. Dev slash video one. And uh, if this doesn't work for you for some reason with a webcam, then change it to video zero. But I have a Raspberry Pi camera, which is video zero, and then a webcam, which is video one. And I'm not sure if you just have the uh, webcam without the Raspberry Pi camera. I'm not sure if you're video zero or video one, but I am sure at this point you can figure that out. Not a big deal. OK, so now we have created the, the camera. So we will now just say while true. When is true true? True is always true. So what we just did was created an infinite loop. This thing will just loop forever. You guys coming over from Arduino, you know that you have the void loop that gives you an ongoing loop inside of there. Here we got to kind of create it with a while true. Now, what do we want to do? We want to go out and we want to grab a frame from the camera. When we go out and give the command to grab a frame from the camera, it returns two values. The first one just says, did you get something? It's probably like a true or a false. And then the second one is the frame. So we're just going to go ahead and put an underscore because we really don't want that first parameter and then a comma. And then here's where the magic happens. Frame. We're going to say uh, that frame is going to be equal to cam, the camera that we created, dot read. That will grab a frame from the camera. Now, after, after we grab it, what do we want to do? We want to cv2 dot im show we want to show it okay and then what do we want to show we got to give it it's going to pop up in a window we need to give that window a name and so I will call it my cam and you notice that's inside of single quotes and then I'll put a comma and now what do I want to show I want to show frame 
okay? Uh, so I grab a frame and then I show a frame. And if I grab, show, grab, show, grab, show, that is going to create a what? A video. Yes, you got it. It's going to create a video. Okay, now we got to have a way to nicely and cleanly get out of this. You don't want to crash a program by doing a control C or control D or control X or whatever. You don't want to crash out of a Python program. You want to exit gracefully because once you tie that camera up, if you come back and try to run the program again after you crash out of it, the camera might still be tied up. So we must exit cleanly and tidy up after ourselves. So we're going to exit if somebody presses Q. So how do we do that? We say if cv2 dot wait key okay and the k is uppercase okay you see it even told me that there wait key all right and uh, how long will we wait we will wait for one millisecond and so this is just going to look as you're running through this look to see if somebody has pressed a key which key well we'll take the ord of q and so this is just taking the ORD number of Q, and then if that is that key is pressed Q, then it will drop down into this if statement. So I'll put a colon here. And then what do we want to do? We want to break out of that main loop. All right. So it will keep lo looping until you press Q, and then it will break out of the while loop. What do you want to do then? You want to cam.release so the camera will be freed up for the next guy that runs the program or when you run the program. And then you want to get rid of your windows. So you will say cv2.destroy all. Ah, look at that. Destroy all windows. I love this IntelliSense. It makes it kind of easy. And then an open close. All right. That is looking pretty good. Let's run this thing. Right mouse click and run Python file in terminal. Whoa! Ah! Did you guys catch that rookie mistake? An if statement has what? Two equal signs. I can't tell you like when when I uh, work with students that that is one of the number one problems that they have uh, is to use one equal sign on an if statement. And man, that is a hard one to find when you're trying to debug. But let's run this baby again. Run Python file and terminal. Okay, it does not like. Uh, it did not work. So we said video cat CV2. We did a read. Uh, we grabbed a frame. We showed a frame. Ah, you know what I did up here? Rookie mistake again. I am not in the home. I'm not in the root. So you have to go to root and then you have to go to DEV, right? So you've got to go to root and then DEV. So you have to have the leading forward slash or backslash, whatever it is. Leading slash run Python file and program. Boom, there we are. Okay, with just a minimum amount of difficulty, we are running the webcam alrighty. So then how do we quit? We queue out of this thing. All right, so what is great? It ran with minimum difficulty. What do I not like so much? It sort of puts the window in random, space, random places. So let's go ahead and do a little bookkeeping. So after we show the window, let's do a cv2.move window. And where, what window do we want to move? We want to move my cam. That's in single quotes. And then comma, where do we want to move it? I want to move it to the upper left of the screen. So that's that is 0, 0. X is 0 and Y is 0. That'll be in the upper left of the screen and it will stay there nicely. Okay, we will do a run Python file in terminal. Boom! Look at that. Good window in the right spot. We are rolling along here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's queue out of that. All right, but how about you home gamers who are on the Raspberry Pi camera? Little bit more difficult. You're going to have to type very carefully, but if you follow along with me, it's going to work. Okay, so what do you have to do 
for the case of the Raspberry Pi camera or a similar, what do they call them, MIPI cameras or something like that? The little cameras that go in that little, uh, with that little ribbon cable coming off of the Jetson Xavier. What we have to do is we have to launch that with a program called GStringer. So I have to create the GStreamer pipeline and the pipeline will start at the camera and then go all the way to dumping the frame to OpenCV. So this is sort of something that runs along uh, at the same time, almost kind of like in parallel with OpenCV. So we're going to create a pipeline. So we have to create the string. We have to create the string that's going to create that pipeline. So we're going to call the string cam set. Okay, cam set. And that's going to be equal to, I said it's a what? A string. So we start with an open quote. Now, where do we start with? We start with a camera. And in GStreamer, these cameras are going to, this, these Raspberry Pi cameras, they, they, they are a NV Argus camera. So we're going to say NV as in NVIDIA. And then it's Argus. A-R-G-U-S, so NV, like an NVIDIA Argus, and then what? Camera, NV Argus Camera, okay, and then it's a source, so SRC, NV Argus Camera SRC. So that is starting at the camera. Now, you home gamers that have, well, I guess you guys are on the Jetson Xavier NX, and that has two camera slots. So you got to tell it which one of those slots you're using. You're either using zero, which is the one on the right as the, as the slots are facing you, and camera number one, which is the one on the left. Well, you can see that here, I have it on the right, so what would my sensor ID is going to be equal to zero. All right. Now this is something, and next week I think I'm going to do a lesson just on GStreamer so you can really understand it and you can make your camera sing and dance. But this week, you're just going to be dumbly doing what I'm doing without completely understanding it. I'll kind of explain it to you a little bit, but we'll really get into this next week. So this is a parameter of the command NV Argus source, and it is sensor ID, and we're setting it to zero. Notice when we're setting parameters, we do not put a comma. We put a space between the command and then the parameters. Okay, make note of that. Okay, sensor ID is equal to zero. Now we put a space, and now we're going to go to the next block of our GStreamer string. It's kind of like we start with a camera and we go to a display, but there's all these different formats. So we've got to convert, we've got to convert, we've got to convert. It's kind of like if you were going, uh, like doing plumbing, and you started with a great big square pipe and you needed to end up with a little bitty circular pipe, you'd say, well, get a converter. Yeah, but there's not a converter that goes from here to here. So you have to go like from big square to big circle, and then from big circle to intermediate circle, and then from intermediate circle to small circle. You see, you've got to have a lot of converters, and you've got to just string them together until you get something that will match the output coming from the camera to the uh, to, 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 to where you're going. And for us, we're going into the app of OpenCV. And so we've got to do some conversions here. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put a filter in here where we put the exclamation point and a space. It's very important to have a space after the exclamation point. All right. Now we've got to tell it what type of video. That camera can generate a lot of different types of video. So we got to tell it which one are we going to grab. We are going to grab the video raw video over x dash raw <coughs> and then that is going to have in it memory memory and I froze up on you and I will fix that really quick here I apologize when this thing freezes up, and I will try to keep my eyes on it a little bit better. 
Okay, there it is. That looks good. Sorry about that. So at least you could see what I was doing. So you can see that we have memory and then close that. So uh, that is memory colon NVMM, all uppercase. And so this is just kind of telling about the the what's coming off the camera, what's streaming off the camera, it's kind of telling the system how to deal with it in memory. So we will be using memory NVMM at least to start with. And now we have to spe specify a width and that width is going to be the width that, this, that the signal comes off the camera. So that's 3264. Okay, the first thing that you new people do is you think, oh, I'll change this to get a different size. You don't change it here. Because if you change the size here, it doesn't resize the image coming off the camera. It just crops it, and it doesn't work at all. So you have to just put this as it is, which is width is 3264, and then height is equal to 2464, like that. All right? That is huge, but don't worry. As we go through these uh, through these converters, we will change that. All right. Now we need to we need to put a comma and now give it a frame rate, and the frame rate is 21 over one. Now I got to kind of warn you about GStreamer. This isn't like oh I go get to go put in there what I want. No, you have to put. It's not like in these things. A lot of times you're not setting it but you're telling GStreamer what it already is because sometimes this stuff is just coming off the camera and you don't get to pick. You just got to tell GStreamer what it is. And again, we'll go into this a lot more next week. Okay, so now we have the frame rate. All right, and now we have to tell it the format and the format is equal to uppercase NV12. Okay, and this is just an NVIDIA format, and it's what NVIDIA uses as it is coming off of this uh, camera stream. All right, so now that's kind of defining what's coming off the camera. Now we want to start doing our conversion, so we're going to be putting another exclamation point. Now this is what I want you to see. When we are giving it the capabilities, the caps, the caps or capabilities come after the exclamation. So if I just give a command in Vargas camera source, when I'm giving the parameters, you put spaces. Like I could put, like there's probably 10 different parameters that I could set here. Those parameters would be separated by spaces. But when I put the pound and now give it the caps or the capability, like what feature of the camera am I going to be grabbing, at that point, the caps are separated by commas. Okay, the caps are separated by commas. And when you run into problems on GStreamer, a lot of times it's because you forgot you use spaces where you needed a comma or you used a comma where you needed spaces. Okay, so now we have gone and we have finished those caps for the camera. And so now we are ready to do our first conversion. And the conversion is going to be an NV is an NVIDIA, NV, and then vid convert, NV, V I D C O N V. And now I'm going to give a parameter. Because I'm going to give a parameter, I use a space. And this is going to be flip method. And I'm going to say flip method is two. I will give you a heads up. Your flip method will probably be zero or two, because that is if you're if it's sort of like zero leaves the camera like this. Flip method two flips it around. And the way that my little uh, I will show you here a little bit bigger. The way my little camera is mounted here, this is actually the camera is upside down. If the cable is coming out the bottom, the camera is upside down. And if the camera is upside down, you need to flip it. Okay. I will be a good boy and go back to where you can see my coding nicely. So we do a flip method two. Okay. And then uh, we also there need to give it some capabilities like what is the stream now we're going to set the caps and now it is going to be video x 
raw. So we're using a different, slightly different format here. We went from uh, raw memory NVMM to just X raw. Okay, and now a comma. Now is where the magic happens. Now is where we resize it to what we want, which let's say width is 800 and height uh, is equal to 600. Okay, so if you were going to change something, you would change these two numbers. But when you change these, it's good to try to stay in the right ratio with what those original ones were. And you can play around with this a little bit, but the things that you could set here would be this width and this height. Okay, now we also have to tell it the format. And remember, before the format was NV12. Well, OpenCV doesn't know what NV12 is, so OpenCV wants BGR, okay? But unfortunately, I can't go from NV12 to BGR, okay? But I can go from NV12 to BGRX, okay? Like a four-channel BGR, all right? So now I've got the four-channel BGR, uh, BGRX, and now I've got to do another convert. So I've got to put another pound sign here. This will be a new command or a new segment in the pipeline. And this is going to be video convert. Okay. Because NV convert didn't have as an output choice our uh, BGR. It just had BGRX. So now I'm going to take the v BGRX. I'm going to do a video convert. And then I'm going to give it the caps and I'm still in video slash X raw and now format equal B G R like that. And now I'm going to send that on to the final destination, which is app sync like that. What is the chance that I did not make a mistake in here? Okay. I hope I didn't make a mistake. Okay, so that is our launcher called CamSet. And then what you do is you just come down here, and instead of this device's video zero, you just tell it CamSet. So how does it know what camera it is? It knows what camera it is because when you said in Vargas camera source, it's telling it it's one of those two. Uh, ribbon cable outputs and then we told it it was sensor ID 0. Okay. Oh man, uh, there is no telling what we did here. There is no telling what we did here. Boom! Look at that! Can you believe that I typed that thing in there? <laughs> Shazam! Man, look at that. I typed that big long string in there without making a mistake. Were you guys able to do that? I hope you were. And look at that. We got the right size that we wanted to, about 800 by 600. So that is pretty cool. Man, we're making lots of progress today. Okay, how do we get out of this thing? We queue out of it. All right. Now, let's just see. Let's play with that flip method. So let me go back and let me make the flip method zero there. Okay. And then let's run it like that. And what do you predict is going to happen? Upside down, uh-huh, like we expected. Okay, I'm going to queue out of that. Okay, so let's go back to flip method two. And I will just show you one last thing here. Let's say, let's try to go to, like, uh, make it a little smaller, like 640 by... 480. If you put a number in here and it crashes, then go back to a number that you want because sometimes you can crash it if you don't give it a good uh, a good size to go to. Okay, so let's come here, run Python file in terminal. Okay, boom, there it is. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. What were we before? 800 by 600. Let's try that again. 800. I'm sorry, 800 by 600. Let's look at that. 
Okay, that's a little bit bigger. Maybe I like that a little. Uh, maybe I like that a little better. A little bit bigger. All right, so we will quit out of this. So we created a GStreamer pipeline. We started with a Raspberry Pi camera and we ended up with a frame inside of OpenCV and we had to do some conversions along the way. And I'll teach you a little bit more about that next week, okay? You'll learn to get yourself around the old GStreamer string. Okay, Let's, uh, let me do one more here. Okay, now what was... The bad thing about the Raspberry Pi camera is really hard to write that. What was the good thing? You've got some more control that you don't have with the webcam if you just launch the webcam using slash DEV slash video one. So let's go ahead and let's show you that you can run run the webcam using GStreamer as well. So I'll do another cam set and I will comment this cam set out. Okay, and I will do a cam set, and it's equal to a string again. But this time, we are not using an NV, an NV Argus camera source. We are going to be using a camera source for a webcam, which you are going to learn is going to be called V4L2. V4, not C4, V4L2. Two, okay, V four L two SRC, V four L two SRC. So SRC is in source. Now we got to tell it which one. Sort of like in the other one, we had the sensor ID, but here we have device, and that's going to be equal to. Can you guess where it is? Slash DEV slash video one. Okay, and again, if you if your other one if you turned out to be on video zero for your webcam, then you need to use video zero here. All right, so that looks good, and so now we've got to kind of tell it the cap or the format. So remember, space because we're giving it a parameter. Now we're going to give it the cap that we want the capability, and it's going to be a video slash raw uh, slash x raw okay we're not going to have the the memory nvn like we did before it's just going to be the video x raw on this one and then we are going to do width is equal to 800 and then height is equal to 600 okay and like on these webcams you can't run them at a huge side size coming in off the USB because the USB is kind of a small pipe for video. This uh, this connector here, I can't remember what it's called, but these hard, it's like a hardware. It's like a big old huge fat pipe. So you can run things great big through these connectors. Not so much, not so much through the uh, USB. So we're going to start with this smaller the video extra with 800 height 600 and I'll give you a warning you can't make this whatever you want it needs to be one that the uh, uh, USB cam supports and so it might work at 800 and 600 but it might not work at at 900 720 you can't just go in and make up numbers it's got to be one that it supports okay and then we also are going to give it a frame rate is equal to 24 over 1. Now, this is just a strange thing about GStreamer. It wants the frame rate in an integer divided by 1. It wants it as a fraction, and I am not sure. Frame rate is 24 over 1. Okay, now we're going to send that to a video convert, and all I got to do is just put in video convert, and video convert sort of fix figures it out. Sometimes you don't have to put the parameters. Sometimes if you have one thing here and one thing here and just do a video convert, it sort of figures it out. And so in this case, I don't really need to put anything in it. And then I will go out to app sync like that. Okay. And so now that all looks good. What is the chance this is going to work? Let's see. And I don't even know where the camera is. I've got so many cameras here, I'm not sure which one it is. Right mouse click, run Python file in terminal. Boom! Look at that! Wow! Look at that! First try. Man, I am smoking today. Look at that! I've made very few mistakes compared to the train wreck that these live 
programming sessions usually are. Okay, now I'm going to do one more thing today that's going to make our little life a little bit easier moving ahead. Okay, and if you try to edit these things, it gets really hard because these things are so long and you might change the wrong thing. So there's just going to be three parameters that I'm going to set up here. I'm going to set width, okay, is equal to 800, say, and then height is equal to 600, and then flip, met, uh, I'll just say flip is equal to 2. Okay, now I've got to come down here and I'll do it on this one first, but I'm going to break that string and then I'm going to put a string in the middle of the string that's based on these variables. Okay, and so what I am going to do here is, you see here's a string all in red. Okay, all in red, all in red, all in red. And then right here I am going to break the string by ending it. Okay. So now that string is ended and that 800 is just hanging. But I'm going to concatenate, which says take that string and concatenate onto the end of it, this string. How do you concatenate with a plus sign? So I am going to add a string to it. Well, what do I want to add? I want to add the string. Uh, I want to add the string. I have got to think here just a second because I don't want to do this wrong. I don't want to do this wrong. So I have to make sure whether this is string or str. Uh, let's see. It's str. Okay, str of not 800, but width. Okay, so you see how I take the string of width, and now I want to add to that this next string. So I'm going to pick that string up where I left off by putting a quote there. And you want just one. It finished it for me, but you want just one. Okay, now I had a string. I slipped my own string in it, and then I started the string again. Okay, and we've got to do the same thing here. We've got to come here. We're going to break the string, and then we are going to concatenate or add, okay, another string, and then we want string not of 600, but string of height, like that, okay, and now we want to concatenate that. And then we put a quote, and that starts the whole string again. But again, it finishes it for you, so you've got a backspace over one of those. You just want one quote here, not two, or apostrophe, or whatever you say, single quote. And now we start our string again. Okay, and then here we got to do the same thing. Right here, we're going to break it, and we are going to add. Okay, and then what are we going to add? str of flip like that okay and then add and then start the string again okay now do I want the 24 there no I do not because that is what I just put in and then the over 1 Okay, and now if I come over here, video convert, I think the rest of this will stay like it is. Does that make sense? Let's look at this one more time here, because I want you to understand, not just copy me. Okay, so you see I have this big old long string. I stop the string. I slip in my string, which is width, and then I add, start the new string, and then I slip mine in and add. Does that make sense? I hope so. Man, there is, what is the chance this is going to work? And then let's make sure I'm using that one. Yeah, that's the one that's used, being used. Oh, it doesn't like it. So I made a mistake in here somewhere. Width and height. String, width, and it is indeed 
str plus height plus frame rate. Okay. Oh, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? I am crazy. I'm going insane. Were you guys screaming at me? That's frame rate, not flip method. Oh my goodness, that was terrible. That just goes back like that. Frame rate is 21 over 1. I saw the F and I thought flip. Okay, where is the flip method? That must be out here further. Where did my flip go? Maybe I maybe it was earlier. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I was working on this second one. It doesn't have a flip method. That's what threw me off. Okay. So now, let's see if that works. So my, my thing was when I saw frame rate, I just glitched and I, I, I put the flip method there, which makes no sense at all. Okay. But now also you can see, you, yeah, all right. Let's, do a, let's try that. These G-Streamer things are really, really, really tricky, tricky things to do. Okay, so I put the comma. Width is width. Height is height. Are you guys seeing my mistake? Maybe that is not a good frame rate. What was my frame rate before? Uh, my frame, because if, if you're not using this, the right frame rate, it's not going to work. I think the frame rate before was 24. Let's try that. You got to use something that's going to work. You got to use numbers that work with that. Ah, oh, boom. All right. <laughs> I was getting scared. <laughs> I was thinking, this is not going good. Okay, so that worked. That worked. And guys, do you understand what I'm doing here? Now, if you want to change something, you just change it up here. So now let's do it on this one. And this should go a little quicker now on, on, this, on this Raspberry Pi one. So we don't change these, right? Because those stay the same. We change it where we convert it. Frame rate stays the same. Okay, flip method. Here is where we're going to break it. We're going to break it. And then we're going to add str of flip. And then I'm going to get rid of this, and then I'm going to add, and then I'm going to put this, uh, uh, the quote back. i got to get rid of that comment because it messes up my co coloring, and it makes it easier to see if we're doing it right if we take that comment off. Okay, so you see we have one long string here in red, and then we slip in our string a flip okay and then that ends and then I do a video X raw width here is the one that we are going to break it here and then we are going to add our string of width okay and then we are going to add and then we're going to put our open quote. We're going to scoot to the right one and back over one of those quotes. So now I've got my string going again. And height here, we are going to break it. And then what are we going to put in? Plus string of, string of height. Okay. And then plus and then quote. Okay, and now here we are going to get rid of this 600. So we're slipping in our string for height, and then we're going back to the overall one. All right, I hope this works. Run Python file in terminal. Giddy up! Look at that! All right. Should I really be that confident? Because I, that was using the webcam, okay, because I hadn't commented this out. So I got a little excited a little early there. It was a premature giddy-up. All right.
here we go boom all right that is the raspberry pi camera okay guys this has been pretty exciting for today's lesson because what have you been able to do we have gone in and we've written a little program and now it was like 18 lines of code and i got white spaces in there let me see if i take the white spaces out it is 16 lines of code and we're able to grab a frame and we're able to show a frame and we're able to do that from either one of our cameras and we're able to actually do it by running the uh, the uh, webcam using GStreamer. Okay, that is pretty darn exciting to me. Maybe it doesn't take much to excite me, but I think that is pretty cool. Now what we're going to do is, what you're going to learn is, is that if this camera is running at 30 frames a second, that's like in computer time, that's like 15 years. So I can sit here between the grabbing the frame and showing the frame, and I can just do be doing a mind-boggling amount of image analysis or artificial intelligence or face recognition or object detection or object identification. I can put thousands of lines of code between the grab the frame and the show the frame and that's really, like I said, where the magic happens. And that's what we're going to be doing in these uh, in these lessons. This is where the machine learning, the deep neural networks, and all that stuff will happen, is between those two lines of code. But since so much of this is associated with the cameras, what we're going to do is we're really going to learn how to use GStreamer. Because let me show you, uh, was I on the Raspberry Pi camera? Yeah, I'm on the Raspberry Pi camera. Okay. All right. So what do I not like about that? Well, I don't like that it is grainy. It's snowy. That's like digital noise. There is noise in there coming off of the sensor. I don't like it because it's very low contrast. I don't like it because it's low saturation. There's a lot of things that I don't like about this image. And so if you really understood GStreamer, you could go in and you could really turn this into a great uh, a great image. And that's something kind of cool to know whether you want to do artificial intelligence or not. And so if you learn GStreamer, which will be lesson number four, you're going to learn GStreamer. And then in lesson number five, we will use what we learned in GStreamer to come in and really make these very, very high quality images. Because it's a high resolution camera. It's an eight megapixel camera. We ought to be able to get a lot more visually appealing image from it. Okay, guys, if you uh, like this, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also, Think about subscribing to the channel. When you subscribe to the channel, make sure you ring that bell so you'll get notifications when my future video lessons are coming out. Think about this, sharing this with other people. This is some pretty cool stuff. Let's see if we can get some, some, more, uh, some more momentum behind uh, this artificial intelligence stuff. And as always, if you have a question or comment, leave it down in the link below. I read all the comments. I'm not able to help you debug your code. A lot of times I get people sending me their code. And with 150 50,000 subscribers, I can't really give individual code helping, but if you post your comments, I read all of them and I try to help where I can. Okay, guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com, and I will talk to you guys later.